the, this whole, you know, Bradley Manning, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden now, I mean, a, a lot of this stuff, there there are folks who are saying that the Arab Spring happened because, I mean, not folks, good, you know, fairly intelligent commentators. The Arab Spring happened in part because of cables released by, by Bradley Manning to WikiLeaks and WikiLeaks uh, via the New York Times to the world. And so, you know, might this be a net positive? We're discovering now you've got, I mean, the, just if seven Republicans or Democrats had changed their vote last week, we would have defunded the NSA spying on, every, you know, taking, accumulating the metadata of every single person in America's phone information. So it seems to me like there's a sea change happening with libertarians and Republicans, excuse me, libertarians and liberals forming a, a block against the old establishment conservatives and neoconservatives on the right and the establishment Democrats and the military-industrial complex on both the left and the right. So uh, Ryan Morrow is with us. He's a national security analyst with the Clarion Project, clarionproject.org, the founder of worldthreats.com, adjunct professor of terrorism. His website is clarionproject.org. Uh, Ryan, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me back, Tom. Great to have you with us. Uh, you, uh, the the note I have here suggests that that you support these NSA programs. I'm wondering how, given what we know about this now, and given you know people from Ron Wyden on the left uh, within the Senate, the far left, to Rand Paul on the far right, saying, "Wait a minute, this is not what the Fourth Amendment says." And I'm assuming that you're familiar with the language of the Fourth Amendment. If not, I'd be pleased to read it to you. But, uh, you know, I'm assuming you are. That I don't see how gathering information on any of us in any way that could at some point in time be, be used in any kind of uh, criminal proceeding against us without a warrant is constitutional. Well, the bottom line is is that the Fourth Amendment is referring to personal property, and you do not own those phone records. I do not own the records that Verizon keeps of uh, what numbers called what numbers and how long those conversations took place. And overall, I think that this it really is just a lot of hype. It's really been caused by a lot of sensationalistic media because your private phone calls are not being listened to. They're not being recorded on. Um, it's not like if you're having a fight with your boyfriend or girlfriend that they are listening in on that. Uh, this is in, they are not recording the content of the conversations. And this program makes sense to me because if you get an Al-Qaeda member's cell phone from overseas and you want to see who called that number, you have to have a way to do that. And you, program, you go to you a judge and you get a and warrant. You see who, who called them? Well, you go to a judge and you get a warrant. Well, this is... Well, yeah, in order to wiretap them, but you don't have to get a judge judge's uh, permission in order to, once you get the Al-Qaeda member's cell phone, to plug it into a database and then see who called them. At that point, once you can see who called them, then you can have the necessary information to go get a warrant so you can wiretap them. So you're asserting that because the financial relationship that has evolved over the years between us and our phone companies is such that all of us presumably at some point have have agreed to a shrink wrap contract kind of thing or a click wrap contract or whatever that says that the the numbers that we have called the information about who we called and when we called them is not our property it is the property of the telephone company then that therefore the telephone company has I, I'm still I'm still missing it because according to the Supreme Court, the telephone company is a person too, and corporations have on many occasions gone before the Supreme Court and petitioned for Fourth Amendment privacy rights, and the Supreme Court has granted them. So why should my privacy rights, you know, if, if my privacy rights can't be violated except by a court order, why should Verizon's? I think that's more of a fair argument um, because. Uh, Basically, what you do have happening is the government coming in and taking the records of a private company, and then that is, to be honest with you, that is something I'm a little uncomfortable with. But then I think about how police have issued subpoenas in order to get uh, the information in order to build probable cause from phone records uh, in the past, and this doesn't seem that much different than that. Well, I don't so, have a problem with a subpoena. A subpoena is a process that involves a judge. It's, it's, it's acceptable under the Fourth Amendment. This has a judge. The, uh, the, every three months, this has to get approved by the FISA court. Right, but the FISA court, uh, A, 100% of the members have been appointed by John Roberts, who, who is, 
Uh, a, I, I think that in and of itself is is a huge mistake to have one person be the gatekeeper for for you know the the entire court system that's protecting not only our national security but our national privacy. It seems uh, crazy. I mean, we, you may love John Roberts, I don't. Uh, but you know, what if on the other hand it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg? I mean, it's it just, this just seems like a really really bad way to create a court. Um, well, number I think one. That the conversation has to be about how to reform the program and not scrap it. I mean, obviously, if there's a, a, a suggestion on how to make the program better in a way that's more comfortable to m more Americans, then by all means have that discussion. But right now, well, I think that's what we're doing right now. Completely cutting it off and just scrapping it, and I think that that's just going too far. And this is this is a well, no. Program. What Congress what Congress was saying, yeah, you know, I mean, Verizon's going to and AT and T and all the other companies, the, these these other you know giant monopolies. They're going to continue to keep our phone metadata for as long as they want to. And, you know, there's nothing you or I could do about that. I mean, we could, we could try to have uh, a conversation about that with them. And there may be, you know, the duck, duck goes of the telephone world. Duck, duck, go. I did a, a half-hour conversation uh, with, the, with the, oh, the founder of duck, duck, go on, on TV last week for our conversations with uh, Great Minds. Um, I believe his name is Gabriel Weinberg. And it's over at conversations at greatminds.com right now. And this is a search engine that doesn't track you, doesn't, doesn't keep track of all your data, your metadata, your searches, all that other kind of stuff. And, you know, it's possible that a phone company might come along and say, we're going to compete based on the fact that we don't snoop on you, we don't keep your information. But that's, that, you know, that's a kind of a separate conversation, although I think it's one that probably we should have. No, but I agree. You're that saying that you're okay with the government... And I thought conservatives didn't like the government. The government gathering all this information when the, the information is always available to the government if they can simply prove need. They've got to come to AT&T or Verizon or whatever the company is with a subpoena, with a warrant. Well, the problem is, is that in order to get the warrant, you have to say, I want to get the information on this specific individual. But you have right. no way of knowing who that specific individual is if... Uh, if you can't search the database. And there's only 22 analysts at the NSA. No, that's only half of the equation. In order to search the database. So that's also important to understand. That's not like you have thousands of people just going through all of your phone records. So the camel's nose under the tent is just fine, and we're going to not have a conversation about someday it's going to be the whole camel? No, I think it's worth having that conversation. Okay. All right. Ryan Morrow, uh, clarionproject.org. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Thanks for dropping by.